Hi everyone, Bandana here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the Broken Arrow Open Beta Test. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, remember to hit that subscribe button and stick a like on the video. So today we're going to be taking a look at unit types and just what they are, what you should do with them and what you shouldn't do with them. I know there's a lot of new people picking up the open beta who have never played a military game like this before and don't really understand what the units are and what they do. So I don't want to go into loads of detail in this video. I want to keep it pretty simple and hopefully reasonably short. And I'm just going to try and cover the basics. And if it's helpful, then I can think about doing a set of medium length videos that cover things in a little bit more detail. I just don't want to overwhelm new players who are engaging with this type of game for the first time and have no idea about military equipment. So if you're someone who has played these games before, this will probably be no help to you at all. This is genuinely designed to be the basics for brand new people to this type of game, a bit like my other video was regarding the deck building. So let's hit the recon tab and we'll just have a look at a few units in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is say what Recon is, which is they are scouts, effectively. They have a longer line of sight range or a longer scouting range, which is designated by the binoculars here, than other units will have. Now, I have mixed feelings about how the line of sight works in the game at the moment. I think it needs to be improved. It's not great. Um, I don't feel like you see enough a lot of the time, and they need to do something about that. It needs some adjustment. It's not very good. Um, so hopefully they will do that before the game releases. This unit, the Cavalry Scouts, are just a three-man squad, so they're not going to be good in an extended firefight because, you know, they're going to die compared to a squad of 12 people. However, they can hide pretty effectively because they're quite small, and they also have an anti-tank weapon is the main thing to say about them. So they have a javelin launcher, which is a sort of medium-range anti-tank missile. And this can be used against vehicles and tanks. And it has heat penetration. And I'll quickly explain what the penetration types are. So if I click on this vehicle, you'll notice that there is armor displayed up here. Top, rear, side, and front. Every vehicle in the game has those armors. It might have zero there, but it has an armor position. The white is kinetic armor, and the orange is heat armor. Kinetic armor is generally what tank cannons will do, and I will show you what a tank is shortly. And heat is generally what an anti-tank missile will do. So, the javelin launcher here shows you the little orange symbol there. That means it does heat damage, and you can check that by the penetration type down here. So that is designed to penetrate vehicles armor. So these guys are good for scouting and being kept at a medium range against enemy vehicles. As long as they have line of sight on that vehicle, they will be able to fire at it with the javelin launcher. These are all the transports for the cavalry scouts, and these ones are called CFVs. They are a variant of the Bradley. The Bradley is an infantry fighting vehicle. It is not a tank. It is an infantry fighting vehicle. It carries auto cannon, so that is a rapidly firing cannon, which fires 25mm shells. It carries a machine gun next to it. If you zoom in, you can just see the machine gun sticking out next to the main cannon. And it also has a tow launcher, which again is an anti-tank missile launcher. False Recon are more of an anti-infantry squad. They have more anti-infantry weapons, and they also have an AT-4 launcher. The AT-4 launcher is effective against lighter vehicles and helicopters. It shows you them there, and again, it does heat penetration. They can fire it at a tank, but they won't be as effective against that as the Javelin would be, or indeed the TOW-2 launcher that is equipped to the CFV. The CFV should be kept at maximum range, 
The Force Recon can probably get a bit closer to their enemies, but bear in mind that they are still Recon and you want to try and keep them alive. They come in a couple of vehicles as well. They can come in this Humvee, which is just a little Jeep effectively, or a big Jeep in the case of the Humvee. And they can also come in the Lav. Now, we can probably sit here and debate a little bit. I'm not sure what the official classification is for the Lav. Technically, it is an armoured personnel carrier, but it is also an infantry fighting vehicle because it has such an array of weaponry. It has the Bushmaster autocannon and a machine gun. So it technically is also a fighting vehicle at the moment. But this comes in a, a few different varieties. The LAV can be equipped with various different weapons and loadouts. Sometimes it doesn't even have a weapon on top. So depending on its loadout, you will probably change its designation. This here is a sniper team. These guys are kept at maximum range of their weapons. To see the range of the weapons, you can click that. That one's 500 meters. That one's 1,200 meters. You're kind of looking at that. Currently, they have an anti-material rifle equipped. You can also just give them a standard sniper rifle, which reduces their range. So, things to bear in mind. I'm not going to go into any other detail on that. We don't need to. But just to say, these are a sniper team. You want to keep them at maximum range. And you can use those as scouts and try not to engage them even and just use them to scout stuff out. This here is just a little jeep, nothing special. This is a tank. For anyone in any doubt who's watched the news and isn't sure, this is a tank. This is an Abrams tank, a variant of it at least. So this one is specifically a recon tank. This one, again, with all tanks, you kind of want to keep them at their maximum range, but it doesn't matter if you get them closer. These are units for engaging. Now, this may be a recon tank, but it's still a tank, and it can engage with other tanks. So, it is still a battle tank, okay? It's not just for sitting off and spying on things. You can use it to engage enemy units. Its main armament is this big 120mm cannon that sticks out the front. And that thing has the capability of firing two different types of shells. So, the main shell that most tanks fire are these ones, which are kinetic. But a lot of the more modern ones also fire heat rounds, which means they can do heat penetration as well. So, it's not a missile, but it, it acts a bit like the missile would in how it functions. We're not going to go into any detail on that. Next up, you have the M7A2 B Fist. This is another variant of the Bradley. This one is a little bit different because this one doesn't have any anti-tank capability. It has the auto cannon, which is better against infantry and light vehicles, and perhaps helicopters, but it doesn't have any anti-tank missiles. So this one, you kind of want to keep away from a big fight. I hope that makes sense. Okay. I should say, sorry, the Fist V, which is this one here, this is purely a recon vehicle. Do not get this near any fights. It has no weaponry other than a little machine gun. Infantry tab. So, again, you're going to get a variety of units here. We're just going to try and skip through them. I'm not going to focus on the vehicles here. You'll notice there's various types of Bradleys. We've kind of discussed them. I will quickly look at one Bradley when we get down to the engineers just to note something about it. So... Here we have the Dragon Team. So these guys are a reasonably big squad. They have a set of big machine guns, which are currently buggy because they look like that on the unit, but they have two big machine guns and they also have Dragon 3 launchers. These are, again, anti-tank missile launchers, but they have quite a short range, so you have to bear that in mind. Marine Raiders are a large squad of Marines. They are very effective against enemy infantry. You can change their loadout to be either close range or a little bit more standoff. If you give them the standoff weapon set, they get an MAAWS, which is an anti-tank. And if you give them the door kickers version, they get the law, which is an even shorter range unit. But this one can fire at infantry as well. It's got a HE explosive warhead. So that's why... They have that because they're close range, so they can fire a close range warhead at infantry as well. So that's the difference between those two loadouts. One makes them slightly more ranged and anti-tank. One makes them closer range. 
pretty obvious with standoff or door kickers. Door kickers is close, standoff is ranged. The Marines here, they have rifles and they have a grenade launcher and they have anti-tank weapons. You can't change them. They are just a general line infantry squad that can do a bit of everything. I'll make a quick note of the vehicle they can come in, the AAVP. This thing has a machine gun and it also has an automatic grenade launcher. The automatic grenade launcher is very effective at clearing infantry out of buildings at range. Keep them at range. You don't want to get them close because then the infantry can kill them. The engineers... These guys are mostly anti-infantry, so they're equipped with various anti-infantry weapons, including shotguns, and they also have a small D. This is an anti-infantry weapon. It has a HE shell, or a HE explosive, I should say. So if you look down here, you'll notice it has a blast radius rather than just a damage. The blast radius is showing you that it can kill infantry as well, along with this symbol up here that says target infantry, and the target types also list infantry. So consider the engineers anti-infantry. They can come in this variant of the Bradley, which is special to them. It has this plow on the front, which doesn't do anything in the game. It's just there to look pretty. However, it does have a different type of missile. It has the Blam, a tow BB. This, unlike the other tow missiles, is anti-infantry, and anti-vehicle it doesn't have much heat penetration but it has a blast radius so it is good and effective against killing infantry as well so this one is better against infantry than vehicles this mech rifle squad the standard one there's a few different mech rifle types the standard mech rifleman are basically a general infantry squad that do have some anti-tank capability at short range then you have the Mech Rifle Anti-Air Squad. These, again, are designed to be anti-infantry squads, but they come equipped with a stinger, so they can engage air targets, helicopters and aircraft. These are the Mech Rifle MMG squads. These are anti-infantry, and they have some medium machine guns. All of these mech rifle squads should be kept at range, preferably, but they can get into a firefight with other infantry if necessary. The only one I would be getting anywhere near vehicles is this one, the standard mech rifles that have the AT-4 launcher. Down here we have the small squad. These guys have the small. As we've discussed before, this one is designed to hit vehicles, infantry, and helicopters. It has a blast radius. They are basically good for clearing infantry. So you do need to get them fairly close, but they are a small squad, so be careful. Then finally, you have the tow team. These guys are specifically designed to be anti-tank. You want to keep them as far away from the enemy as possible. You want to keep them in cover and in buildings. The squad loadout can either be an anti-tank missile, the standard one we've seen, or a special variant, the tow 2B, which is what we call a top attack missile. This is designed, as you can see from this little icon here, to attack the top armor of tanks and other vehicles so it goes up in the air and then comes back down on top of the tank the idea being that that is a weak spot for tank armor so that is a good place to hit tanks and even other vehicles this has a maximum range of 1600 meters and you want to keep it at that range preferably at all times you want to sit it in a tall building where it has a good line of sight and then not move it. It is a defensive unit. It is not really for assaulting. In the vehicle tab is where you'll find most of your tanks. We will quickly look at this. This is the LAV AT. So it is another variant of the LAV. This time it has an anti tank weapon on it. The choice is either the TOW 2 or you can upgrade it to the TOW 2 that is top down attack. It is your choice. But that should be kept at maximum range. Then you have various variants of the Abrams tank. The best one is the M1A2 SEP V3. The slightly worse one is the SEP V2. And the slightly worse one than that is the SEP. I'm not going to go into any detail other than saying tanks are tanks and they should be engaging at maximum range to keep them as safe as possible. But if you are assaulting, obviously these guys can charge in and do a lot of damage. 
Down here at the bottom, we have another anti-tank unit. So this is just a box with an anti-tank weapon on, in this case, the TOW-2 launcher. That should be kept at maximum range. In the support tab, we have a couple of different unit types. We have anti-air units like this, the LAV-AD. As you'll notice, it is yet another use of the LAV vehicle. This time it is an anti-air unit, which has a Stinger missile launcher and a Gatling gun for firing at aircraft. The Gatling gun can also fire at ground targets as well. This thing should be kept a little bit closer than your other anti-air because it is designed to be fighting nearer the front line. It's got a 2,000 meter range. Let us compare that to the Patriot missile system. This is a long-range radar anti-air system. This one has 4,000 meter range. So this could be kept back behind your lines, whereas the lav -AD wants to be kept near the front lines to engage helicopters. The other anti-air unit here is the M6A2 linebacker. This looks a lot like a Bradley. It is the same platform, but it has a different weapon set. So while it has the Bushmaster here, it also is equipped with stingers rather than tow missiles. And you can upgrade it to have the Shorad. That is a short-range anti-air defense, basically. So this is a 30mm cannon that, as you can see, likes to point up in the air, and it is designed to engage air targets. It can still engage ground targets as well, but it's trying to engage air targets. It's only got a thousand meter range on that cannon though. And it can also have radar enabled to make it more accurate, etc, etc. Radar is very effective at helping these anti-air units out. Other than that, there are transport units. So this is a LAV-L. It is designed for carrying supplies. It is a heavy lift weight unit, so it can carry supplies. If it has a seat there with people in it, then it can also carry people, but this can only carry supplies. The LVSR is the same. It carries supplies to the front line to rearm your other troops. Don't put your supplies too close to the front or it'll probably get destroyed. Then you have your artillery pieces, which come in a variety of forms. The MCV and the LAV-M these things are basically mortar carriers. I've just opened it so you can see. That is a mortar. So these are shorter range artillery pieces that fire mortar shells. This fires 81 millimeter shells. This one fires 120 millimeter shells. These are obviously bigger. They will do more damage. Simple as that. They can also smoke an area to cover your escape or cover your assault. So smoke can also be beneficial. They are like lower end artillery. Then your heavier artillery are things like the Paladin. I should probably start with that. This is what we call a tube artillery piece. It looks like a tank, but this is designed to fire long ranges through the air. So it has like a firing arc that fires from one end and then comes up over the air and drops back down on its target. There are different loadouts for this weapon, and this is the first time we're really going to see this. You can either have a high explosive round, which is good at hitting buildings and infantry and things like that it can damage vehicles as well but you have to get a pretty good hit to do any serious damage or you have to use laser guided rounds the excalibur rounds here you need someone to laser designate a target and then they can fire a laser guided round at it the other option is a cluster round what's special about cluster is they are good against vehicles so as you'll see here it's top attack armor so these fire or explode in the air above their target and drop lots of little shells and all of those little shells are like little bomblets and they do damage over an area and they are effective at hitting the top armor of tanks they won't do as much damage as some weapons would but that's what they're effective at doing hitting the top armor of vehicles they can also damage infantry You'll see it says cluster type. That's trying to demonstrate that it is a weapon that drops lots of little shells or lots of little bomblets. The final one we will talk about are the HIMARS and the MLRS system. These are basically 
missile launching systems. So they fire lots of big or small missiles depending on your loadout choice. You can have high explosive warheads, cluster warheads, their cluster warheads do an extra thing, they do napalm damage, so they do damage over time in the area they hit. So if units stay in the area of damage, they take more damage. Finally, this is the Attackums variant, which means that they get two very large missiles. These are ballistic missiles, they are long range, and they hit right where you tell them to hit. They're basically the equivalent of having laser guidance, and they do a massive explosion where they hit. So if you drop them on top of a tank, they may well kill it. However, they can be shot down by air defense units with a radar capability. So they're not the be-all and end-all. Okay, we're getting near the end, so let's have a quick look at helicopters. Let's start with the transport stuff. So the Super Stallion, the King Stallion, and the Osprey are transport. They can carry supply and they can carry infantry. The Osprey is a hybrid. It acts like a helicopter taking off and landing, but then can convert by turning its blades to basically be a small plane. So it's very fast. Then you have this one, which is sort of an attack helicopter and a transport. Transports a lot less but also has some weapon systems. It has these little pylons on the side that hold some rockets. The pylons can be empty though. The Super Cobra and the Viper are attack helicopters. So these are brought in to attack enemy units. They both have cannons on or little Gatling guns. They can have various weapons on their little pylons or their wings. And in fact, they even call that the wingtips. So, it's little wings here have the pylons on at the bottom. So, those are the pylons. So, the pylons can have different weapons equipped. So, you can choose those. The inner pylons, mostly just rockets of different types or Hellfire anti-tank missiles, which is what's on there. The outer pylons can have rockets or Hellfires for this one. And then the wingtips can have either Sidewinders, which are anti-air missiles... Or the sidearm, which is called a seed missile, and this is designed for anti-radar AA operations, so anti-air. So those radar anti-air units we saw, these missiles track those targets and blow them up. So if a radar is enabled, they will follow that radar and blow it up. So that's what they're for. The Super Cobra has a few more options on its outer pylons. You can have different tow missile options, four or eight. You can have the Hellfires, and again, you can have the Sidewinders or the Sidearms. So lots of choices with these. Helicopters are best kept at a long range, and they should be used for mopping up enemy infantry where you know there's no anti-air. They can be absolutely devastating. However, they get taken out pretty quickly by anti-air units, even if they have a little bit of defense capability. So they have flares and things, okay? Finally, we have aircraft. So aircraft, again, come in a variety. For the Americans in the open beta, you have a single transport plane. This can be used to paradrop troops on the other side of the map or wherever you want. Obviously, bear in mind, it can be shot down with all those troops in and they will all die. So it carries a lot of supply, heavy lift weight. It can also carry small vehicles and it can carry up to 64 troops and then drop them off anywhere on the map. Technically, it can also be equipped with some weapons if you see fit, but I wouldn't get too worried about that at the moment. Now, the fighter jets come in a variety of types. One that I'm going to point out here in particular is the Prowler. The Prowler has the ability to carry harm missiles these are seed missiles they are designed to kill radar anti-air systems and they have a very long range of 5000 meters you don't want to fly these over the enemy you want to get them close to the enemy and hope that they launch their missile the harm missile should auto lock on enemy radar anti-air systems and fire themselves you shouldn't need to target them and they will then home in and blow up that unit that is what they are designed for. 
So that's one of the weapons the Prowler can carry, and it's the only option here, I think. Possibly one of the Harriers can carry them as well. But that's what the Prowler is often brought in for in the game. The F-35 is a stealth jet, as you know. Its weapons are kept inside its bays under here, so that it can be stealthy most of the time. Whereas, other jets like this one have all of their weapons on their pylons on the wings and on the bottom of the fuselage. Okay, so they come with a variety of different weapons. I'm not going to go into detail on all of them, but they can carry anti-tank weapons, they can carry anti-air weapons, they can carry bombs, they can carry different types of bombs, they can carry high explosive bombs, they just explode in a big blast. They can carry the cluster bombs, which we've talked about cluster already, where it drops lots of bomblets. Some of them can even carry napalm bombs that set an area on fire. So lots of variety. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. I'm just going to say jets should be used carefully, but they can be shot down as anti-air is very effective in this game. So often when you bring these in on a bombing run, for example, they will get destroyed. So that's the basics of all these unit types. I hope that was helpful to some people. As I say, I don't want to go into too much detail here. I can always think about doing that later. But just to give you a brief overview, it's already 30 minutes long, this video. I hope that is helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.